Thank you for joining us at noon. I'm Hayden Balgavy. We are going straight to the developing story south of Stuttgart, where an officer was killed in an overnight shooting. It all started with a pursuit late Wednesday night that ultimately ended with two dead and one injured. THV 11's McKaylin Johnson was the first reporter on scene this morning and joins us live from where investigators currently are. McKaylin, walk us through exactly what happened and what we know right now. Yeah, Hayden, a tragic story here south of Stuttgart. And like you said, it all started with a car chase between two Stuttgart police officers and the suspect, 31 year old Jacob Cole Barnes. Now, during that car chase, Barnes got out of his car and started to run away. That's when Arkansas State Police say he then shot at the two officers, ultimately killing Sergeant Donald Scobie. Now, as he was running away, he then entered a home right here on Riger Road. You can see it just behind me. A woman was inside and barricaded herself but she was safely taken out by the Arkansas State Police SWAT team shortly before 7 a.m. this morning. Now, around 7 a.m., Barnes shot a state police SWAT team member who is now doing okay, being treated at a Little Rock hospital. Barnes was shot and killed just moments later. Now, condolences are pouring in from police departments across the state as this town feels the impact of this situation. Meanwhile, the Arkansas State Police is leading this investigation and Sergeant Scobie's body left Stuttgart at 11 and heading to the state crime lab and should be arriving in Little Rock at any moment now. Now coming up, I'll have reaction from city leaders who call Scobie an advocate for this community. I'll have that coming up in just a little bit. For now, live in Stuttgart, Michaela Johnson, THV 11 News. All right, Michaela, thank you so much for those details. We will hear from you again a little bit later on in the show. And remember, THV 11 is your home for breaking news. You can follow updates on this story throughout the day on the THV. 11 app. Also sign up for push alerts to be notified first about breaking news from the THV 11 news team. Start of the weather now and meteorologist Scott Covert in this afternoon. Scott, it is finally sunny outside. It my is friend. finally <laughs> sunny. It has been several weeks since we saw a truly, really sunny day. Enjoy it. Certainly it's cold out there. Temperatures behind that front that moved through yesterday have really taken a hit. This is what we're tracking for you here at the noon hour. 47 is the actual temperature. However, it feels like it's 41 in Searcy. The temps 45, but it feels like 40 that of course the wind chill and that's going to keep Keep things nice and brisk all day long. The actual high temperature likely reaches into those upper 40s this afternoon under a mostly sunny sky, but it's those winds that's going to keep it feeling nice and chilly out there. In terms of what we're tracking in the days to come, it's going to get a little bit colder tomorrow. A chilly but dry weekend on tap. The first dry weekend we've had all December long. Enjoy that because, well, we're tracking yet again another rain system that could move in early next week, bringing with it slight chances of rain. We'll talk about that and what looks to be a cold blast of Arctic air that arrives just in time for Christmas. Scott, thank you. And a THP 11 update, a new change in the email retention policy at Conway Public Schools has parents upset and seeking answers. The board changed their policy to only keep emails for three days. Now, one law professor we spoke to says the change is legal, although not the most common thing to do. Parents like Jessica Miller say that makes them lose trust in the school board, and she wants answers as to why that change was made. I don't see how we can accomplish anything else as a team in terms of, you know, a team that's that's here to protect our children and make sure that the future is bright for them. Um, there's just no, no way for us to do that if if we can't trust them. We also reached out to the district office for a statement or to speak to the superintendent. We were told he was not in. When we do hear back, we will, of course, keep you updated. Right now, two young brothers are recovering at home after a dog attack landed them in the hospital. We do want to warn you some of the images you are about to see can be disturbing. Now, Caitlin Mayo, a Bigelow mom of three, tells us her two sons saved their three year old sister from being attacked by a pair of dogs on Sunday afternoon. Her 10 year old son, Aiden, took most of the bites and was just released from the hospital last night. She says it's been a stressful past few days, but she is thankful all of her kids will recover OK. He risked his life to save them like. I, I can't I don't think I would be that brave to go fight this dog that you see tearing up your brother. Now, Mayo says that she is taking legal action against the dog owners and police told her the dogs could be euthanized. 
New today, a bill is filed ahead of the upcoming General Assembly that aims to change language in the law to protect kids online. Republican State Representative Charlene Fight is behind House Bill 1028 with help from the Morgan Nick Foundation. It would replace the use of the phrase child pornography with possessions or use of child sexual abuse material in 15 sections of Arkansas code. A push for the change has been in the works for months now. Fight says it gives a clear distinction that no child can give consent to explicit photos or videos being shared and viewed. I hope that people will not see this as a victimless crime because there is certainly a victim. That child is a victim and a crime has been perpetrated against that child that will impact that child for the rest of his or her life. The bill is expected to go to the Judiciary Committee in January when the General Assembly begins at the state capitol. Happening today, Central Arkansas water leaders will be meeting to discuss a possible bill increase. The proposed 10 year rate increase would cover about $685 million worth of needed improvements. Now, if approved today, construction and repairs would begin next summer. A new influx of migrants along the U.S.-Mexico border shows thousands of people in search of a new life in the U.S., but the massive arrivals are overwhelming one border town. Nicole D'Antonio reports from Washington, D.C. Another wave of migrants is expected to enter the border city of El Paso, Texas today. More than 7,000 people have crossed over from Mexico in just the past three days. As a pandemic era immigration restriction known as Title 42 is set to be lifted next week. It currently allows authorities to immediately expel migrants crossing into the U.S. All hands need to be on deck. Let's keep the migrants needs in, in mind. They're not a project, they're people. The jump in migrants is straining resources in El Paso. Shelters are full and many people are sleeping on the streets in freezing cold weather. Some Republicans blame Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, saying he allowed the situation to get out of control. He has failed to secure our border and has thus endangered Americans. The Biden administration has already helped El Paso with its massive expenses. Now, city officials there are expecting to receive an additional $6 million from FEMA to help deal with the crisis. The Lopez family was fortunate to get into an El Paso shelter after a harrowing 2,000-mile journey with their 13-year-old daughter. Ingrid Lopez told CBS News her family and hundreds of other migrants were kidnapped and locked in a warehouse for days. She says the group managed to escape by breaking down the doors and running to a neighboring town for help. Now the family's headed to Baltimore for an asylum hearing and to look for work. Nicole D'Antonio, CBS News, Washington. A judge is ordering David DePap to stand trial on state charges stemming from the attack on House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's husband. A preliminary hearing Wednesday revealed that DePap had a list of other potential targets, including the president's son, Hunter Biden, California Governor Gavin Newsom, and actor Tom Hanks. Now, the court determined that there was enough evidence to move forward with prosecution on all state charges. DePap previously pled not guilty to multiple state and federal charges, including attempted murder. Mr. DePap is going to be fighting his case in court, not in Colorado. Um, thank you. He is due back in court on December 28th for formal arraignment. The Senate has unanimously passed legislation to ban TikTok from all government devices. The House must also pass the bill before it can reach the president's desk. Lawmakers from both parties have expressed security concerns over the China-based company that owns the popular social media platform. Well, many sports fans love live events, but sometimes the experience, it is a lot to handle. Just ahead, how stadiums at the World Cup work to provide a quiet place to relieve anxiety. Hey, why don't you uh, grab a ladder, a bottle of Windex, go there and clean up that uh, camera lens for us. It's kind of foggy this afternoon. Despite the camera lens being dirty, it's actually a beautiful day all across the natural state. Lots of blue skies, lots of sunshine out there. It's going to be nice, but it sure is going to be cold, and it gets even colder in the coming days. We'll take a look at that Arctic blast of cold air coming up when THB 11 News at noon returns.